Let's see what's gonna happen when we give our pig some cake. Oh, that's some good stuff. Good morning, Modern Stedders. It's Friday, and Friday means Modern Stedder update. And today, we get to update you on the $30 chicken coop we built for 30 bucks. And the Icelandic chicks need to get moved, so perfect timing. When the chicks are bigger, and they can use the automatic feeder we built that goes with the coop, we won't have to open this up and move their feed. These chicks sure are loving being on fresh pasture. And I'm loving how easy this chicken tractor is to move. The Icelandic chicks are doing great. They've been outside in the $30 chicken coop now for four days and they're doing really well. They're thriving, loving eating fresh bugs and grass. Good morning, Rufus. Rufus is doing well. Sweet pea is beginning to molt, but Blackie is looking good as usual. We put the automatic chicken feeder in with the Icelandic chickens because they're tall enough to use it. The chicks are still too small to reach in there, but they're loving using this. It's working out great. It keeps the feed nice and dry. It will hold 25 pounds. I have it sitting up on a bucket right now because it's the automatic feeder is designed to go in the $30 chicken coop corner seat that we made. Hopefully Sweet Pea recoups from her molt quickly. She's starting to lose all of her feathers, Rufus that stage of life. The weather we've been having here is crazy. Two weeks ago we were supposed to get a frost at our location. We didn't. Other places in town did. And then we've been not 90 again, but we've been in the 80s and the next couple of weeks it's supposed to be warm. This morning it's chilly and today's going to be chilly, but it's supposed to be warming right back up. But look at the fall garden. It's got some really bad bug pressure on the cabbage. And then it looks like the deer started eating our broccoli. What the heck? Son of a gun. And I was looking forward to eating that purple broccoli and purple cabbage. Man, those animals, you never know what's gonna happen. Next year we'll have to put them inside of a fence and keep the deer away from. We have plenty of apples for the deer. Why do they have to go after our purple vegetable garden? Oh man. Keeping an eye on all your birds, Pluto. The chickens in New York City are doing awesome in the area. We still got a lot of apples, but believe it or not, they've been eating quite a few of them. Good morning, chickens. Do you want to come out? It sure is nice having the rainwater out here to New York City. It sure makes it so convenient when giving the chickens water.
I just keep putting the feed on our apples, encouraging the chickens to eat them. <laughs> Mr. Biggs is nice and noisy as usual. The heritage meat birds we got are looking great. We're planning on harvesting them the weekend after the pig harvesting class. So the first weekend in November, and if that weekend doesn't work out, we'll do it the following weekend. There's one thing I've been wanting to show you and today's the perfect day for it. Can you see behind me the nice deep green grass and then the yellower and all different looking grass next to it? Let me show you. Nice deep and green, yellow and just not as nice looking. This is thicker and more clover and just nice grass. Where over here it's yellow, it's dying. There's a lot more weeds in it. We haven't run the chickens here recently. We've ran them here, and it's growing back. Same with over there. But look, this is a great little picture up here. It's like an island. We ran a chicken tractor there, we ran one there, and for some reason that little middle strip got missed, and you can tell. Look at the color difference. They were ran over here. Plowed out, stay over here. It's like following the yellow brick road. I dragged the chicken tractor over this one spot and came back here. Isn't that just amazing? Look how much thicker this grass is where the chicken tractor was ran. And if we look down here, you can see it again. One of the tractors was ran here, the dark green spot. The big area right here, that's where we had New York City. Look how nice that looks. Raising the chickens on pasture or grass makes a big difference in the health of the chickens, the quality of the eggs, the quality of the meat. 
makes a big difference on our health because we get to eat healthier food and it makes a huge difference on the grass and the planet's life. Look how great that is doing. That is just a win-win for everybody. That gets me pumped up. That's so exciting. We're not only doing good things for the chickens and for ourselves, but we're doing great things for our land. I'm trying to think if we've done anything new with the outdoor kitchen lately. We're getting ready to do a few things. We got the sink in location, so I gotta hook up the drain for that so we can drain the water outside. This is the, this is the setup we have going on. At some point I'll have to make shelves for in between. I have blocks to raise up our antique wood cook stove so it'll be the same height as our countertop height and then I can hook that up to the stove pipe. We did our apple cider pressing. I'll put a link to that video right here if you didn't have a chance to see it. But now we have apple cider in the freezer frozen and we have apple cider vinegar on the counter starting to ferment. While we were building the $30 chicken coop in 30 minutes, we kind of put some of the stuff for the outdoor kitchen on hold. We can get back to those projects now. If you didn't see the video series of building the chicken coop in 30 minutes for 30 bucks, I'm gonna put a link right here to the playlist. For now, I've been setting my five gallon buckets up under the eave overhang, so that way when it rains, we can fill our buckets up. The compost and outhouse still looks the same. We got our hooks, the clear roof, our nice view, the sink. Now it's on to what everybody wants to see, the pigs. But first we gotta get something. This is one of the best parts about raising your own animals, is your food that you're throwing away isn't waste. We're turning it into pasture-raised bacon, or, or pasture-raised pork, or pasture-raised chicken and eggs. It's not waste anymore. Good morning, girls. Let's see what's gonna happen when we give our pigs some cake. You want some chocolate cake? Come on. Good morning to you too. Let's go. What's gonna happen when we give the pig some cake? Is that some good chocolate cake? That's our leftover birthday cake. All that's some good stuff. They're licking that clean. Oh, what's that? You want some milk? I give you some chocolate cake and now you want some milk? We have some leftover spoiled milk. And of course you give the pigs a little bit of chocolate cake and they think they need some milk. Oh man, what are they gonna want next? Would you like some milk to wash down that cake? Look, they made it into chocolate milk. You don't have to worry about anything going to waste around your modern homestead, that's for sure. There's plenty of things fighting over it to get it. I 
I need some help, Modern Stedders, and I know you have some great ideas. Our local power company was replacing some telephone poles. One was at the end of our road, and I asked them when I saw them down there, what do you guys do with the telephone poles? They said, first come, first serve. I said, well, I'd like some. If you want, you can just drop them down in my house. It's just right up the road. You don't have to bring them back all the way to the station. When I came home yesterday, look what I found. Two telephone poles. They both measure around 28 feet long. I was wondering if they dug them out of the ground or if they cut them. They dug them out somehow or pulled them out. They're both newer poles. The one at the end of our street they replaced because it wasn't tall enough. They wanted to raise up the lines. So they're both fairly new. They don't have that nasty creosote on them, so we don't have to worry about that. My question is, what can we do with them? One thing I was thinking, and I need some ideas for this, is I need to make a pole to hang the pigs on. It needs to be 14 feet high. I need some ideas of how to make that to work with these. I don't know if I could use one pole and then some more post and beam material that I have left over there. I'd love to see what the modern steaders come up with. So leave it in the comments down below. Send me a picture on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, or just email us or go over to our website. There's plenty of ways to get a hold of us, which is awesome. We're there for you. Now you know what a pig does if you feed them some cake. They're gonna ask for some spoiled milk. Share the video around and let everybody else know what a pig does when you feed them some chocolate cake. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it. It's really helping the channel grow. We wanted to thank you for that. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.